Will you please welcome to America, Jerusalem! Hi, friends. Welcome to another episode of Area 312 Rock and Metal Vodcast. I'm one of your hosts, Kent, along with my co-host, Rex. Friends, today, our very, very special guest. He is one of the OGs, one of the original greats of hard music with a Christian message. They have delivered now 10 studio albums here in the States, two live albums, six compilation albums, and he's done it all with his band that we all know and love, Jerusalem. Angelic Warlord here in the States has listed Dancing on the Head of the Serpent at number 44 on his list of the top 50 greatest Christian metal albums of all time. And their new album, if I'm pronouncing it right, Stingin', it released yesterday as of this recording on 12 15 23 in Europe. We're talking about our very special guest, the one and only Ulf Christensen. Welcome, Ulf. It's an honor to have you. Guys. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi. So, friends, where, where Ulf is at in Sweden, it's it's 12 noon. I made a mistake thinking that was 5 p.m. here in the States in my time, and it's 5 a.m. So <laughs> my hair is a little messed up this morning. But anyway. <laughs> Ulf, it's certainly an honor to have you, sir. And let's let's start out with the newest release, if I'm pronouncing it right, Stingin'. Um, it means it means stitches. It means stitches. But the first record now is in Swedish, and in the springtime next year we'll come up with the English one. Wonderful. Right. And I look forward to that very much. Now, <clears throat> why did you choose to call the album? in the English Stitch, why did you choose to call the brand new album Stitch? Because uh, I think that uh, refers uh, to several things actually, because what I have gone through, because I have stitches in on my stomach, I mean, they took out uh, several stuff, we went through a lot of cancer and stuff, and then on my back too, so I have it on both sides. That was uh, not, I, I didn't think the title because of that but i finally basically just uh, understood that this is kind of almost prophetic you know it is actually prophetic because i i call it sting which is something that happened to the people when peter was preaching to them in, in, the, in the day of pentecost and and really what happened to their hearts they asked what what should we do because we i mean Actually, what Peter was preaching was a message of repentance and to turn back to God again. And, and actually to accept Jesus and all of that. So that was what happened in their hearts. And basically that what I think the church today needs to have a stitch and ask what should we do? Because basically, especially the Western World Church is, is behind in the many, many things, not, not modern ways, not like finding new stuff, not the cool stuff. I'm talking about the life with God and, and having a relationship with Jesus. That's really, that's really what I think about. And the whole record is about that, basically. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and that sounds wonderful, Ulf. And regarding the musical aspect of the new album, what can fans expect to hear sonically, to hear musically from it? <clears throat> I think that... Uh, you know, usually you don't, you don't, uh, you need to move away a little bit from the record when you've been working for so long because this is close to five years, and and uh, you can't uh, just can't. This is the way. This is the way it sounds and stuff. I have to basically listen to other people and uh, reviews and so. But I do think that what comes out of it is that it's it's uh, we are picking up. Uh, from the record a warrior basically we're picking up a lot from there and we even put it in uh, some easter eggs in it basically things that we've done before yeah 
Yeah, that's right. And and that is um, what I think, uh, not, not the whole record, but a lot of it is referring to heavy rock, maybe even heavier than we have been before. That's, that yeah. sounds great. Now, Ulf, uh, where can fans, I know that your website is at jerusalem.se. Are there, is that the one venue where, where fans can pick this up at or... Uh, where can fans pick this up at? Well, we we don't have, uh, as you are in the U.S., then we don't have distribution in the U.S. right now. And uh, distribution is, is a problem because many times you, you, you have to have the right people. You have to have people also that uh, basically do the job right and so forth. So when you live in Sweden, that's a little tougher. I mean, we have had in the past, of course, we have uh, we had uh, distribution in the U.S. and but right now it's for because it's in Swedish. So we basically focus on the Scandinavian countries because most people in Scandinavia understand Swedish. So, but uh, so but now we have people asking for the Swedish record <laughs> from the U.S., from Brazil, from other places, and they said we don't care. I actually spoke with one of my guys here, and he said, you know. They said, we don't care. Well, one guy from Canada, I don't care. I just want it. So that's fun. You know, that's a, that's a, that's an honor, really, that people can look through that. <clears throat> well, if you mentioned, of course, Jerusalem, Jerusalem is a very much uh, beloved band by all of us. I'd be willing to bet you, Ulf, that you're a fan from Canada. I want to give a shout out to one of our friends, Michael Crew. He's a huge Jerusalem fan, and he lives in Canada. So shout out to you, Michael. Um, Ulf, let me ask, I was doing the math. Am I correct? Did Jerusalem actually begin as Jerusalem in 1975? Yeah, we started in 1975, but we changed members, of course, through the years. And, and <clears throat> through the American touring years, it's been Peter and Mike, basically, that was, and Dan, that was uh, in, in the team, in the band. But we switched members. Basically, it's it's a long journey. I mean, we're close to. I mean, we're close to fifty years now. <clears throat> and and uh, some of our I man, some people, some of the guys uh, were sick. And I mean, even when we did the records, uh, this rec this record. I mean, my English. I haven't been speaking English for a while now. So, but even when um, <clears throat> we did this one, uh, we um, we had accidents happen. Basically, so that's why it took so long. Because I went to hospital for cancer stuff, and even in my back, it's not cancer there, but some other stuff happened. So, and Michael, the drummer, had a stroke basically, but he's on the run now. I mean, he did the whole record, so he's he's doing fine, you know. So, yeah, well, we had so many things. I don't, I, don't, I can't even mention it. So it was so much stuff. <clears throat> we have yes, to go through. Yes, sir. And I, 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 you're looking good, Olf. I knew about your health, and you're looking good, and we'll continue to keep you in our prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I was doing the math yesterday, and I'm like, you know, goodness, next year will be 50 years since the formation of Jerusalem, and that's that's awesome, Ulf. And uh, Ulf, had you known at that time in 1975, had you known of any other Christian rock bands at, at the time, or was were you kind of the only one around that you knew of doing that there where, where you're at in Sweden? Well, in Europe, basically, we, we were the only one. Then there came a lot, several bands after that. And in America, the only one I knew at that time was Resurrection Band. Yes. So yes. so that was basically the two that played hard rock, basically. There, there were other bands before that that was more uh, softer and more mellow and so forth. Yeah, that's the one. Yep. So I, I think that um, we were pretty much alone when we started. Well, that's 
that's amazing. And uh, Ulf, I got to ask you, what number one? What made you choose the choose the name Jerusalem? What led you to choosing the name? I I must honor to say I think it was the Holy Spirit because I I I didn't have a clue what I was. I didn't have, and now I know. I mean, of course, the journey has been long and so forth. I learned much more, and and uh, Jerusalem is in focus constantly, and will even be more in focus. I'm not speaking about the band first of all, but I'm speaking about Israel and all that. So yes, sir. I think that I choose a name that is basically eternal. That it, that's what it is, actually. <clears throat> yes, sir. Can I can I ask a question about the logo? All that that is a really you know, awesome logo. Who who designed that? Did someone in a band come up with that? Or did you have a friend that was an artist or something? How did that logo get designed for the yeah, band? Yeah, that, that was a guy who worked at the CBS at that time, hmm. uh, Records. And, and he was, uh, it, it's a secular uh, record label, but mm-hmm. it's not existing now. I think Sony Records bought, mm-hmm. bought them up. He 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 just did it, and I think it was so cool. So we kept it for years, and now it's almost like a, what do you call it? Like a market. Uh, I don't know the word for that. You know, like an icon or something. yeah, yeah. You, just, <clears throat> yeah. you just you just recognize it right away. And you know that hey, that's Jerusalem. Yeah, so awesome. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I think I think my son wanted to take it away. I mean, he's in the band today. He's been in the band for some years now. But he wanted to take away, and I told you, you can't do that. You just can't do that. That that has to be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's even there now on the, on the new record. So that's cool. cool. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful logo, very classic. And uh, uh, so, Ulf, you know, you were talking about, you know, Res and Jerusalem, Res Resurrection Band being the first two back in the day. And um, incidentally, we're the name of our vodcast, it's in honor of Resurrection Band off of one of their songs, Area 312. Yeah. Um, Ulf, was, was hard rock with a Christian message? Was that accepted in your country back then in the early days, or did you get a little a little blowback from from um, <clears throat> I, I think we, we the persecution came from the church. That's where it came from. And, and secular-wise, I mean, from non-Christians, basically, they loved it. And, you know, it's, it's, it's like Jesus and the people and the Pharisees. It's kind of like that scenario. And, and, and not everyone was against us. I, I wouldn't say that. It wouldn't be fair. But they were pretty much um, in the, mag- you know, Christian magazine especially was against or for. So it, it was a heavy debate at that time. And... and uh, yeah, I think uh, I think people try to stop us. People try to you know speak about us in uh, in a bad way and try to demonize us and stuff. But you know, I knew I knew I was just I was not raised in church, so I didn't know the rules, the system, and and I I was just a newborn Christian and I played rock and roll because I was raised like that and. So I, I, it took me some time to change because I thought that I will never play rock and roll again because no one was doing it in church. So, and I was ready to give that up. I, mean, I was ready to just cut it off. And I did actually for a couple of years. And, but then when I was out playing and, uh, you know, took, took some guys with me and I had maybe acoustic guitar and stuff like that and even electric and sometimes, you know, but I, I, I saw that the music I played for the church at that time, we're talking about in the 70s, was not relevant to the people where I went in, in the clubs. And we have something here that we call like a, a, it's a gathering places in almost every city for young people and stuff when we went there. And I just uh, I understood that the music that I actually liked to play, and that music is basically from the 60s, where, where the Kinks and the Yardbirds and the Small Faces, and that was the kind of mu- music that I was raised in. And so I, uh, Procol Harum, or instead, I don't know if you know about any of this past, but uh, yeah. It's, 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 yeah, and that was what I was raised with. And I, I couldn't do anything more than that. That, that was, so it, it, it was basically natural for me to start singing about Jesus. 
but we always been singing about Jesus. I would say that 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 has been something I kept almost holy to to not step off that. Maybe a little bit in the in the can't stop, can't stop us now record we did because we met some you know record guys and they said you have to write hits and I never in my life ever wrote a hit i don't know i didn't really know what it was so i tried to do that and okay. and, and it was a waste i mean really waste of time and but then you know we came back again to to what what my my calling and my skills were at and uh, i i kept that uh, in this record I, mean, I would say this record here that you probably haven't heard yet is is probably one of the best we've done, honestly. And I think that's what people say. So that's not me right now. Sure. So, well, take it for whatever it is. Well, that's wonderful. <clears throat> and, you know, you mentioned Warrior earlier. You kind of likened it to Warrior. Now, of course, you know, I, I have a variety of your, your albums. <laughs> uh, uh, I think Warrior, for some reason, uh, and dancing. And, I, well, the, you have so many great albums. And there's much to love about all of them. But... Here in the States, I think especially Warrior kind of resonated with us, especially. And um, I, I have no doubt the brand new album. And of course, I'm going to have to wait until spring, but I, I intend to get it. And and she was a great album, too. Now, uh, Ulf, I meant to ask you, um, when did your relationship, when did your journey with Christ begin? I was I was 21 when I got saved the first November, first of November. 1970 um, no, yeah the first November 1970 I got saved okay was did you hear the message at a church or or where did you hear the gospel message at I I my brother uh, came home a couple of weeks before that and he told me to join a youth meeting here in Gothenburg and I was uh, it was the Jesus people mm -hmm. that came and um for what I've seen of church at that time, they were very, they had long hair. They, you know, they were not the right type of person that I thought about being a Christian. And uh, I, I thought, you know, I, I was also, I guess I, I was also very hungry for, for spiritual meaning in my life. And, and uh, my, my girlfriend broke up with me, so that added some to it, and and uh, now we we've been married for fifty two years. So, but uh, <laughs> she got saved after that, and she actually asked me, she actually asked me, uh, because she saw me and she saw a very peaceful person. I was not what I was before, and uh, she she said, you know, you're so different, and and I say, how how can I? be the same she asked you know and i said you have to go to a, a, a place and you lace, raise up your hand because that's the only way i know that you could be saved you know and she said um, she said i want to i want to first she wanted to join me together we want us to be together again and i i said it's impossible because you you're not i mean you're not you're not loving you're not loving jesus you you live you i know i know your life you live because i lived that life before with you and she said, that, now then, how can I then be like you? And that's how it all started. So we went to a place where they prayed. And, and, and actually, they, th that was not the right place. But when we walked out of it, she said, no, I'm saved. And I said, no, you can't be. You didn't do this thing. You know, didn't raise your hand. And you didn't do that. And uh, she said, no, I'm saved. You know, I'm saved. No, no, you're not. We started having an argument there. And I was upset. And. And then my friend said, but, but if she says she is, you know, you have to believe her then. And then I gave up, you know, as she was. So that uh, now we have um, five kids. We have 13 grandkids. We, and I still do rock and roll. So I'm not <laughs> dead yet. <laughs> and the yeah. devil tried to kill me, but he couldn't, you know. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir.
Uh, I first actually heard Jerusalem. The first year that I heard of you uh, was from this album right here in 1985. And it was wonderful. And I love in his majesty's service. And um, I just want to say, you know, you've ministered to people like Rex and me for, for decades now. And just want to thank you for being the vessel that you are for the Lord. And uh, uh, as the story goes about Jerusalem, um, I had read that you all were playing in the earlier years at a Greenbelt Festival in the UK and concert goers brought the album back to the States and Glenn Kaiser heard it and he passed it on to Pat Boone. Is how does that story what's what's your perspective that's, on that story? That's true. That's true. That's the way it happened. He was listening to it and, and actually that was the first record. So it was very swinglish in, in a way what I was singing, but but uh, <laughs> Glenn heard the seriousness in in the lyrics he heard these guys mean what they sing basically so he called me after that at the same time you know benson company as it was in nashville at the time and and pat boone's uh, lamb and lion um <clears throat> the record label was under that so they asked us to join there and so they they were the one that was did put us on mtv mtv the first you know and then we did a tour with the Res as an opening act, and um, I think I think we were <clears throat> I think we were very, in a way, aggressive in, in our way of playing and doing. Uh, and I know that for the American now I don't know how it is now because I I haven't been in America for quite some time. But at that time, it was the British rock and roll was more more like that and the american was more nicer and more that's my opinion you know? sure sure and, and uh i think that uh, actually that brought us further because we did the first tour and and glenn and the, the guys there was very nice people i mean i i love them and and um they actually did something they didn't need to do it, but they did it. So they brought us over and, and we did this tour. And uh, I think we ended up in uh, Costa Mesa in L.A. Mm -hmm. just by ourselves. So they left. I went back to Chicago. But I, I, uh, I think that was I'm grateful for what they did. And it opened up. But then we went through so many things with the record labels in America and you know the check is in the mail and that whole thing. So I basically, mm. I basically got tired of it in, at the end, and um, I said it's it's better we do not uh, work with people. I'm not saying everybody is like that now, so don't misunderstand because they were not. But not work with people that don't pay because it's if they don't pay, you know, you live, you have your living, you have to plan, you have to do things like that. So we were more focused on Europe and and. Uh, so now I've been sick for quite some time, you know, so I haven't played much, but I think the, the, we will start uh, doing some tours, but it's, uh, it's a thing between me and God, because I don't want to just do a concert. I, I, want, I want the presence of the Holy Spirit to be there, and I can't produce that. Only God can do that, but... I have to obey him and do what I should do with my life to bring that whole presence over people because that's really what it's all about. I mean, it's not about me or being a rock and roll star or it's really not. It, it's about him and it really is about him. And, and I think that's what the whole church, in many ways, we need to go back. Not saying that everybody's not doing the right way, but yeah, you understand. Hopefully you do. <laughs> Yes, sir, I do. And, you know, uh, to, to that point, uh, you know, I just I just observe the world and what the world says is good and acceptable and all. And I just I, I know the Lord's word is true and it's he's he's true and he's right. And I just see his word and his prophecy coming to fruition each and every day. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, woe to those who call good evil and evil good 
and that's yeah. what's that's what's happening. And um, you know, Ulf, I know that uh, you know Yeshua Jesus, He is our good shepherd, and uh, you know, Ulf, I, I've said this time and time again, but what I love about the true and living God, you know, and Yeshua, uh, His Messiah, God in the flesh. He never lied to us. He, he he told us that in this world we will have trouble. Yes. Yeah. Take heart. I have overcome the world. And you know, Ulf, I know uh you demonstrate the the fruit, the fruit of the spirit, and I know that you're a vessel for the Lord. And um we all go through struggles and hard times. And I mean, look what Jesus himself, our example, went through. And um, but I know that the Lord is using you still. And um, I, I thank you. I know that you have had some health troubles and I say that, you know, uh, I know the, the direness of it, but thank you for pressing on and um, the Lord will never leave us or forsake us wherever we are at. And, and I just want to thank you, Wolf. And um, Wolf, you mentioned, <laughs> you said the word swinglish earlier, Swedish and yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, if I'd like to ask, because I've always marveled at your albums, because you do have releases, of course, that are in your native language, and then you have the <clears> English. <throat> Was English something that you automatically kind of grew up learning, or did you learn English in order to produce the albums so that we could understand them here in the States and North America? I think I grew up with English. I think that uh, there are several reasons for that. Uh, and and uh, one was that I was listening to a lot of rock music. And I hear the English, the way, the tone, the, the style, what do you say? That the, uh, well, there's a difference, for, of, for instance, between English, British English, and American English. And, and I, I listened to that and I picked up, I had, I'm pretty easy in in picking up the, the language, the tone, the, the, the melody in, in the language. But I went to school. I don't know if I learned much there because I was pretty rebellious in that time. But um, <laughs> I think, uh, I think, uh, I think today, I think uh, you learn English because you see the subtitles. Because we have subtitles in Germany and, and in France and in, in Spain, they don't have that. That's why they're so terrible in English, because they don't understand. I mean, in Germany, it's very hard. But uh, here you have the subtitles. So anyway, and you see the word spoken, and you see what it means in a subtitle. That's very good education, actually. Mm -hmm. There has to be a moves that you can see also. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to say one thing there. Uh, I, when I was uh, had this cancer, and I was, uh, I I did not think that I was going to die. They never told me that. In the doctors never told me there's five percent will survive this, you know, because I had in, uh, cancer in in the. English word for that. Is it pancreas? Yeah, 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 panc pancreas. And uh, But I never go Googled on it. I just felt that was not what I was supposed to do, and, uh, and I didn't. So I didn't really know all the chances, but I, I had promises God gave me year after year. I mean, the promises, confirmations of what he said, prophecies and stuff, and I knew that's not yet fulfilled. So I, uh, I said this to God that you can't say a thing to me that you're not keeping. I mean, you, you must keep your word. You just must do that. 
And I was not mad or anything. I'm, I was just very firm in my way of thinking. And so I, I said, I, I expect you to keep your promises because I want to run the whole race, my whole race. I, want, I don't want to just end it now. And, and, uh, and then also I, I said to the devil, I told him, uh, you know, you, you are not in charge of my life. You're not the one telling me when I should supposed to die because I'm standing on the righteousness of Jesus, not my own righteousness. It's worth really nothing, but on him and on him, then he is the one when it's time for me. Mm. It's not you. And I was, it was so strong in me. So I even had my, my friends here at the church and I said, I don't understand. You, you're not depressed. You, and then they were kind of, you know, asking that. And I was so, I was so grateful for his, his presence with me and the faith that raised. I, I, I think it's all the times, the journey behind in the, in the past, the, the result of that made me believe. Even if I, of course, I had to fight, you know. And I think that uh, I understand now that it's more it's actually very important to be prepared for the days that are coming. You can't just start preparing yourself when the day is there. You have to be prepared. And you don't really know what that means until you're in it. I don't say everybody needs to go through this. but So I actually, I'm, I'm working fine. I'm, I'm, I have... I have, uh, I'm doing fine. My, my body's doing fine. I was doing checkout here on, on the cancer and they said, it's okay. Yeah, it's six months after. So that they say. And I, you know what? I was not even, you know, having a hard to, time to sleep. I'm just so firm. And I hope that that could help people because I know there's so many people today that go through all this stuff, you know, in life and, there is only Jesus. There is nothing more than that. And when you come to that point, you you know it doesn't matter if I succeed or I do that or that. You know, all I need is you, and that is that is what needs to come back. You know, very much in, in young people's life. They know nothing today. I mean, young people here in Sweden is it's a catastrophe. They knew nothing what they even believe in church. They don't know what they believe in. So. I'm pretty tough in this record because I'm, I'm t basically saying this. Is it I who have changed or is it you that have changed? And you make up your mind. If you have changed, then tell me, how can you change from what I've said and have a good conscience in that and tell others that that's the way we're supposed to live? So the church here, you know, I live in a socialistic country. And I hope for everything there is that America will never become like that, even if you're getting closer, because it's, it's so much other stuff. There's goodness without God, basically. That's what I call it. There's goodness without God. Take out God, but be good. And you can't. Because goodness, that kind of goodness will be evil in the end. Yeah. I mean, I can preach about this so much. So. Well, you know, Jesus said... They called Jesus good one time, and Jesus said, who is good but God? And, of course, he was alluding to two things. You know, God is good, and, of course, Jesus is God, you know. But I understand what you're saying, Ulf, and um, thank you for that word. Um, Ulf, I'd like to ask, uh, continuing on the, on the journey with the band in the early days uh, in the States, I had read that Jerusalem aided Larry Norman as his backup man back in the day. Is, is, is that true? And was for that as, was that for a single concert or was that for a series of concerts or? Oh, it was not, it was not for a series of concerts, uh, but we did play with him. I don't know if we did in America. Maybe we did in a festival or something. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't really remember that, but uh, I, I know in, in Norway we did once, you know, so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, you know, Ulfa, behind me, I have the, the vinyl album, Dancing on the Head of the Serpent. And yeah. that really, you know, that just blew up here in the States in a great way. Um, that was released, you know, here in the States in 88. The music rocked. The cover was rad. Ulf, did you receive any backlash uh, 
there in Europe, did you receive any backlash for the cover upon the album's release? <laughs> yeah, we did. Uh, there uh, was um, there was uh, a, a <laughs> the record stores didn't want to show the album cover, so they hid it under the shelf, really, and uh, sold it. But they wanted the money. <laughs> yes. We'll still sell it to you, but we're gonna hide it. <laughs> yeah. So, but in America, no, we didn't have any 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 negative response, as far as I know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, that's because Striper came out with "The Hell with the Devil," and so that took all the heat for that one. But um, yeah, now, Ulf, I there's a there's a North American mix and a European mix for dancing. What yeah. what was the catalyst, all for? for doing that? Was it because of kind of the differences between the musical tastes here in North America versus, you know, in your, in your country? I, th I think that uh, it was, I mean, that the European came first. Right. And when I listened to it, I didn't feel, I was not really satisfied. That's really what, what it was. And so I thought maybe I'd do some songs all over again. I think, I think the American one, you know, put it like that, is a little bit heavier. Very, not, not like, oh, like this, you know, but it's a little bit heavier. So uh, that's why we did it. Yes, sir. Yeah. So did you have a say in that American mix then, or if you you were the one who said, "Hey, let's let's redo this and let's let's make this heavier sounding than what the original version was." What do you mean? Like I have, like yeah. Were you the one who said, "Hey, we need to we need to remix this. We I don't like yeah. the way this sounds." Yeah. Okay. I was the one. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm being the boss basically, even if there has been battles, of course. But uh, today it's not. Uh, I don't have that battle. I think that uh, I think that uh, <clears throat> I think that the band uh, went through a lot of that uh, in the let me see in the '90s somewhere around there, where. I think we all was going to take the responsibility and stuff like that. And it was okay. I said, that's okay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, this is hard to explain for people, but, you know, there's a calling on my life and, and uh, it's obvious it must be for most people, if, even if you don't understand anything, there is a calling on me and I'm not just a band leader, singer and guitar player. I am I'm called by God to do this. This was a calling he gave me. I'm responsible before him for what I did, how I lived my life, how I treated people and stuff. I am then I also need the freedom to take decisions. But of course I'm, the, I'm, I'm not taking decisions just like that. Let's go, let's move all of us to South Africa or something like that. It's not but there or uh, there were decisions I was needed to take. And I, I did, uh, I said that uh, when I don't have joy in what I do, then I, I just do it and I go up on stage and I do it. And people usually don't see that, but you have an inside battle where you don't really feel that you are, doing it right uh, how can I say that because I'm on radio so it's not that I'm uh, blaming anyone I just think there is an understanding I think the understanding is far more now than it was then and and in, in the beginning of course I was young I was uh, very you know eager and I you know I had to I almost forgot my family one of the songs in uh, Stitches 
is about this that I actually forgot my family. On, I'm very honest about this and, and uh, had to go through an understanding that a, a mission from God is very much connected with if you have a family, you also have to take your responsibility in the family. I'm not saying that I was irresponsible, but I said that, you know, daddy, you was not, you were not there when I needed you. That happened. <clears throat> and I have made that up. I asked for forgiveness. I spoke to my kids. And it's not the guy, it's really not the guy, Philip, who is singing. We are singing, singing both in several songs. He's singing, I'm singing, he's singing, I'm singing. And it's not about him because he's the one that has the best grow up uh, situation in a family, definitely, because he's a baby. But um, as I had when I grew up with my father, and, and that, that's a major problem today. Actually, you know, in the end of the Book of Malachi, the God said it has to be a reunion, reunion here. It has to be, you know, your father fathers has to turn their hearts to the kids. But the kids also need to turn their hearts to the father. It's not just one side. It has to go back. And But usually kids respond very good when the father says, I'm sorry, you know, I should have done this. You know, I did, I did a bad job here. And, I, and, you know, what can I do to make it better? And that's really what this song is about. It's really very honest. I think, I think it will bring uh, people to tears, actually. Sounds because you know. You know. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. And I, I appreciate the vessel, you know, Ulf, and uh, that you are, and you've always brought the word and, and honesty, actually, in, in, you know, all the albums. I mean, the um, the words there, and thank you for being faithful to that. And uh, Ulf, just a few more questions, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, you know, Ulf, one of, the, uh, one of the albums that came out in 94 was Prophet. Um, and it kind of had like a, a harder edged ethereal sound, but you know, all there was dancing on the head of the serpent. And then there was a six year hiatus until profit released. Yeah. Did the band just, did you guys just need a break at that time? We went through Bible school at that time. Okay. And, uh, I was, I was so tired. I, I remember I was in, uh, in the north of Canada, and I was, I just, uh, I just made up my mind that I will take a break. And I told the other band members that I will take a year off and go to Bible school. So you, you can do what you want, but if you want to hang out, hang, you know, go with us, that's fine. So uh, it was only one guy that stayed, but um, we went up for Bible school, but it, it ended up being eight years. So, um, and we went through that. Uh, it was very, very good in many ways. Uh, but it ended up where where um, the pastor there turned him, he turned against rock and roll, which was very, very confusing to us because he actually welcomed us in the beginning. And then it was the devil and, and that. So that's what he said. So. And, you know, you look up to someone and, and you really respect someone too. And uh, you got to know also it's, it's a man and it's not, it's not God. And, and uh, I came to a point when I was really had to make a choice. If I'm going to stay here, then I have to say that everything I've done with Jerusalem was wrong. That's where he came to that place, you know, and because rock and roll was of the devil and that was what I played. So I, and, and uh, you know, honestly, I, if God said that, I, I could accept it, but <clears throat> then I saw the fruit of it. I saw all the people that were sitting there basically saved through what we did, you know, as a band. And it just didn't fit into my head. And now I know it was more about control than it was really about. Uh, That's right. So um, I'm leading a church now here, and uh, it's a small church, and we, we basically are fasting and praying mostly for our nation. And I, 
I keep it in my heart that control, it comes out of fear. Because when you start to be afraid as a leader, you start to control people. So in one way, I went through a school where I actually saw that that could be very bad if I give in to fear in my life. So I have to give it to the Holy Spirit. Actually, the Holy Spirit really tell, you know, he tells us you can do what you like. You can do what you like. And it doesn't mean I want you to do what you like in every, everything, just a single thing. But I said, you can do what you are. You're free to do that. And, and that freedom needs to be. And, and then uh, we also have to have a lot of love to people that do it wrong, you know, because uh, leadership is, I'm writing a book right now and I'm going to finish that up. And I'm going to talk about leadership and I'm, I'm going to do it in a, in a, in an atmosphere of love and understanding it's not easy to be a leader either. It's very tough to be a leader because, and especially here in Sweden, your question immediately in a church, the church's question. And for, I don't have to go through this, you know, with it because it's so much, but I know you, you have the same thing in America, but uh, the leadership is, is uh, calling before God. I'm, I'm standing before him every day with the way I take my decisions. And I'm not afraid, it's not that, I'm not walking in fear, but I'm walking in faith. And if I walk in faith, then I'm safe, then I can have peace in my heart and I can love the people. I don't have to be afraid if somebody doesn't like me, then that's fine, you know, but I like you. So that's the way it works. So, ah, it's cool. Yes, sir. Ditches, ditches all around. I keep your feet on the road if you want to be sound. Fall in one, say goodbye. Religion leaves you there to die. Oh, some bands, some bands have a sound and they stick with that sound and it's kind of the same all the way through, but you have such a variety. Do you enjoy experimenting with sound to, to bring out different, different flavors and feelings? I, I think profit was a very big step out of, if you look, compare that to profit, to a warrior and even from uh, dancing on the head of serpent. And it was uh, in that sense, I think that, uh, you, you know, I, I was, uh, I met you two at Greenbelt and they went up and played. There were only one guitar and one singer. I was, but the, the energy and the power in that music really hit me. And I'm started to think, you know, maybe next record we should try to move into another way of playing because there is no heavy chords in, in that music. It's not that, bum, bum, that, that, that pumping. It's more like uh, the bass is filling up much more and doing the melodies and the harmonies and so forth. So I, we did that and, and that really came natural because we went into the studio and we just turned on the tape recorder. And what you hear on Prophet, a lot of it is just from straight from what we did, uh, of course, we went edited and, and you know, I did lyrics and fully, but I think that was a result of eight years of uh, not being playing together, not being able to do that the way we wanted to. So it's hard to explain. And uh, we had very, very good reviews from Prophet, I must honestly say. I know people love Warrior, but it's on both mostly the metal heads. But um, yeah, I think Prophet. And then we then we did um, She, and She was uh, pretty similar in that same way. But uh, then it was the message too. I was more into what you know in the Bible speaks about. We we've been like prostitutes. Mm -hmm. basically so I was surprised because I was expecting some heat from that and from the picture only one person <laughs> why did you choose that you know only one person I thought we are dead we don't I mean you can't shock anyone anymore it's almost like we don't we don't react to anything you know in anything and and um, 
I don't know. I I think that uh, there is one more record. Maybe you haven't heard it, but was uh, uh, Entertainers and Soldiers, and that is also that's a very experimental record for me because the only thing I don't play on that record is uh, the drums. I do the rest of it. And uh, that I did when I moved to America. I went, I brought it with me to America and I met some people there and so forth. And yeah, so. Good. I, I'd like to make a couple comments about the album She Off. Um, I'm not a musician or anything, but to me, and I really enjoy it, the bass seems to be a little bit more up in the mix on that album. I don't know if I'm just imagining that or. Um, especially on the song "Suddenly," um, I really can, you can really tell the bass is up there and and rocking, and I really enjoy that. And I, I was going to ask about the cover of that too, Ulf, if I can. Who is the woman on the cover? Was that just someone the record company got, or is that someone that is friends with the band? Or um, I was curious about the lady. No, it's a photo. It's a photo for they sell on on the internet. Mm, okay. So this it was not me who found it. It was another guy who helped us a little bit through that time. Gotcha. And he brought up several pictures and then we sit and, and for what we were writing down when I saw that picture, that's the picture I said, that's the one. So we did put that on and uh, <clears throat> that's the story. Gotcha. <laughs> and, and then with your solo album that you were talking about, Entertainers and Soldiers, um, and you did all the, you said everything, but the drums, um, was that an enjoyable experience for you just to do everything kind of on your own and kind of do whatever you wanted to do, um, on the yeah. record? Yeah, it was, I was, uh, I was fully free to do whatever I wanted to do. And, uh, every, every musician, I think, or especially if you're a songwriter, I think you, you like to do that some, and you know, sometimes the band, and now we, we work so much together on this last record. So I think that uh, uh, Philip, my son has been helping me out a lot because he is, uh, he's a very good singer. And uh, so we are, he, he's singing on, and he, he even wrote his own song and we have it on this record. But I, I, I like to work together with people, but uh, as I said, it's, I've been so used to writing all the songs through the years. And so the first time we ever did that was on Profit. And uh, from there, I think uh, we, we ended up in some, something different than it was before. Some people, some people were shocked because they wanted the rock and roll. I mean, Jerusalem is supposed to be <laughs> back like this, you know, <laughs> we were not, but I think it's it's a very very good record in my in my opinion, you know. So, yeah, you know. it seems to be uh, what I would say. It's a little bit more reflective or whatever, um, maybe compared to uh, some of the Jerusalem records. But it's yeah, it's a very good album, Wolf. Uh, do you think you'll be doing another solo record like any time in the future, or maybe you don't know that? I, I just uh, that is a really good record. You know, I have done one solo record I did uh, in my dreams. I did that in 80, somewhere around. And then uh, I did this one, Entertainers and Soldiers. And then I did done five hymn records. <clears throat> but the hymn records, I do it my way. Uh, it's, it's in a different... I don't know if you heard them or anything like no. that. No. But uh, they are... They went well, very well. Basically, I think they even, <laughs> in some way, they even did better than Jerusalem in, in sometimes uh, some of some of the hymn records. But I do it my way. It's not like it's very. I don't use electric guitar. I use acoustic guitars, and um, hard to explain, you know. Sure. But uh, it's it's. You can listen to it on, on uh, Spotify because they steal all my music there. <laughs> <laughs> And I 
ask you about the the volume three and volume four records um old, yeah. um and they they kind of have a american titles to them those were the days and rad um those are very hard to find here in america um by the way um what what exactly are those um songs those weren't new songs were they or were they um that the no. band did no because during that period of time when when uh we were really really touring and doing i wrote songs all the time and uh, both those records are leftovers basically okay from we, we just couldn't fit into because when you do a, a vinyl you have uh, i think 22 minutes each side yeah and you just couldn't fit it in so sure so and then we went on and i didn't think so much about it and then uh, one day it was like in the uh, 90s there yeah, I uh, asked the band, that band that played in that, can we do this? And we just went in and we did it. And, and, but I, I, we haven't, <clears throat> you know, we haven't put everything on Spotify. I, 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 I basically, I know there's a lot of artists that don't like that because you, you don't make any money. And, and we really, I mean, the people ask today that you should do a record for, you know, hundreds of thousands of crowds and then you do it on, you you don't get any money for it, right? Right. And, and and I'm not looking for the money in a sense, but I can't just give it away, and and yeah. just stand there because people think that uh, it costs nothing to do it, but it is. Right. And it does. So so I don't know if we ever we put out violin three and four on, but we 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 considering to uh, re what do you call it reprint or what yes re reissue yeah. yes. Uh, all over again and do it uh, maybe with an, with another cover I don't know but that could be the story that we do that well I think that so, would be a wonderful idea Ulf just as a, a fan of your music because I know a lot of people you know I mentioned those records and they're they know maybe about them but they've never heard them because they kind of came and went really quick here in America so if you would be willing to do that I know you would have people who would pick that up here in America for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I, I they haven't here, have here, they ask for it. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think you're right. Maybe we should do that. Yeah. That would be wonderful. Oh, I have just a couple more questions and I'm looking at the time. And um, uh, so I, I did notice Ulf and Rex was talking about rad and uh I noticed that between Rad in 1998 and then She, there was a pretty substantial time gap between then and 2010. Was there, did, again, did you just need a, uh, the band need a break during that time or was that intentional or were you just trying to grow with your family? You mentioned, you know. Uh, what do you mean from She up to now? Is that what you mean or, well, or there's before She? Well, from Rad, that was in 98, and yeah, there wasn't yeah, much yeah. released between then and she. And, of course, I understand about your health and what you've been through. Um, but, you know, you, you just been taking time to concentrate with your family, or? I, th I think we, we've, uh, you know, it's connected with tours we did here, too. We did one tour here called uh, In Pure Swedish which means that we only were singing songs in Swedish. No, we didn't do that, but we did it. We marketed it like that. And that was a tour we did after we've done Violin 3 and 4, or those were the days and 4. And I think that um, I was in a period also that I was... Uh, I don't know what you should call it. I definitely think it was the family. We moved here. We live in a live in another place here, but uh, we're selling the house right now. So, but um, I think that uh, I need to I needed to basically grow up in some things as my as I could see now. I didn't know it then, but um, it's hard to explain. Really, it just it just time went by and it was hard to start going into studio again and 
maybe we would have done if it was like in the 80s, I would have done it, you know, because we never waited this long. I mean, we waited a long time, every record. I mean, I, uh, Kalle Grimmark, who, who plays in Narnia, he, he, I mean, they do records, I mean, every year. They, but I can't say, I can't say, I can't have, understand how you can do that. But I, I think that I am more in what I write. The lyrics, especially on this new one, has been my greatest battle. Because I really, really wanted to say something that is for now. And I really wanted to say it the way God wanted me to say it. And it didn't matter if some people don't like it or not. I have to say it. And that is, that is really what I am. And, uh, but it was a long battle with the sickness and everything. But the sickness also made the rec- this lyrics more, more valuable. I say the lyrics is more deeper. I think you have to listen a couple of times to really understand. It's not like it's, you know, things like poetic, you don't understand. It's not like that, but it's, it's something you go deeper. God speaks to you deeper in your heart. And that's what I try, especially the, the, the title song. That's really about my sickness uh, period. It's hard to explain if you haven't heard it, so. Here in the States, friends, be mindful that, uh, as Ulf mentioned earlier, uh, Stitch, as it's called here in English, uh, it releases in spring of 2024. And the uh, the uh, European version, uh, it's already available. And the website is jerusalem.se. Um, Rex, do you have anything you'd like to ask before we go to scripture closeout? No, I think we've kind of covered it here now with everything. So it's been wonderful to talk with you, Ulf. I mean, you are one of the pioneers in your band. And so just thank you for the time you've given us. Thank you, Rex. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for being the vessel for the Lord and all glory to him, Ulf. And thank you for being the vessel that you are. And um, uh, Ulf, we... Uh, you know, before we close out every episode, we we have uh, what we call a message from home. It's a it's a scripture close out, and uh, uh, Rex is bringing it, and uh, he's just going to read a, a verse of scripture real quick. But yeah. Ulf, uh, at when he when he finishes, just hang around for one more moment. But Ulf, is there anything before we go to message from home? Is there anything that you might wish to express to your um, to your friends and fans out there uh, from your heart? Yeah, I think uh, it has a lot of stuff, <laughs> but I think that um, <clears throat> I think we definitely are getting closer to the conclusion, basically. And there, there will be another time coming after that, a thousand years with Jesus and his his servants. That I think is very true. I think it's. Um, I think we need to raise up our heads that Jesus says, you know, don't look at everything that's going on around you. I mean, he told me that don't look at Sweden. I know Sweden is bad. I know things is happening, but I'm still in control. So you, you, because I, not, no, you know, I'm the beginning and I am the end. There is nothing else between that or that can make that shake. And he said, look at Israel because that's where you will see the times getting closer. And, and I think that, uh, that is uh, that is also where we're at. So he said, "Lift up your heads, because you, you're uh, what do you call it when you, your redemption draweth nigh." Yeah, you, you, your freedom is close because you know it's this is this is birth pains that we see right now in the world, and and you know when when you, there's birth pains, then it means that something is supposed to be born, and it's not a it's not an no no evil devil that's going to come out of that. It's going to come a wonderful thing out of that because we are looking forward to 
to something that's fantastic. And I, I have it so, I'm so glad, I'm so thankful to God that I can be a part of this. And I will do my best and every you will do your best and we will do whatever we can to, to be true to him and to people. So that's my last word at this interview. Keep, keep on doing it, guys. Just go on. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Rex, what do you have for our message from home? Well, um, the uh, verse of scripture that I selected is um, Luke chapter 2, verse 38. And I'm just going to give a little background because I'm just going to read one verse. This is uh, before this is where um, Simeon has been promised by God that he's going to see the Messiah before he he dies. And there's mm. also another uh, prophet there, Anna, and she's also um, very old. And verse 38 picks up uh, here where it says, coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. And I think we've spoke about this today, Ulf, and the band's name, and it's this time of the year where Christmas is upon us, and that's when Jesus came into the world to be our Savior. I just thought that that verse of Scripture was just very fitting for the time in general. And again, I Amen. just want to thank I want to thank you, Ulf, and the band for all that you ministered to us. And we say this all the time when we were growing up, you know, um, you and all these other bands were kind of like our youth ministers, um, and you, you just mean a lot to us. And we just want to let you know how much you mean to us all. Thank you. Thank you, Rex. Yep. Yes. God bless you. Thank you. Thank God you bless you. <laughs> you know, all, all glory to the yeah. Lord. And uh, this has just been an honor and a privilege. And, oh, thank you so much. Stick around for one more moment. But we're going to say goodbye to our friends out there. Thank you, everybody, for thank watching. You. Bye. That's not much That's not much Christian!